A cursed mountain, hiding $200 million in gold. 250 lives have been lost, but now, five treasure hunters will defy the curse and go in search of what is America's deadliest treasure. Oh yeah, look at that, man. I don't know, I can't see whether it's caved in. It might be a prospect. Yeah. You gotta be very careful when I think down your head. Hold it, stop, 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 stop. Slowly back up, guys. You guys clear? Yeah. Yeah. We've got a booby trap set up here. This is a deliberate death trap. And the question is, who set it and why? In the Western superstitions, Wayne Tuttle and his team of Dutch hunters are following a deadly trail straight into the dark heart of the mountains. This is the Gonzales map. Where a newly revealed pair of maps dating back to the Peralta and Gonzales families who once mined for gold here have uncovered a series of clues that point to the lost $200 million fortune. I got a mine up here, guys. You got what? You got a vein. A crude vein of quartz. Mining equipment. Dude, that's a candle holder for an old mine. The mysterious mark of the Apache Black Legion. I see a black handprint on the wall. They're trying to tell us not to be around here. That could be a warning to turn back. And this cave, guarded by a lethal booby trap. Is there something hidden here that's worth killing for? Wait, so you're saying there's a booby trap in there that's been set off? This is a booby trap. That was a covered pitfall. Someone stepped through there, hit that wire. End of story right there. The booby trap found at the cave entrance is designed to cause death by decapitation. A thin wire firmly anchored to opposing sides of the cave is stretched tightly from wall to wall, about five feet off the ground. As the visitor approaches, soft ground covering a pit gives way, causing the victim to fall forward. The thin wire, acting like a razor, neatly slices the victim's head from his body. Yeah, we want to kind of be cautious here. It's been set off? Well, definitely you can tell it's been set off. But you don't know if that's the only trap. Uh -huh. You're looking at the broken branches, the wires busted. Someone's been back in there and set that thing off. I can tell by the disturbance of the rocks and everything. It's just to kind of set you up, take you out, or hurt you bad. Wait, if this was meant to cut somebody's head off, then where's the body? It's a good question. I, mean, I don't see any bones. I don't see any sign of anyone's here still. Might have just buried them up in a bank in the sandy wash here somewhere. You need to always be cautious coming in these areas looking for footprints and any other type of disturbance. As twisted as it is, we got led to a death trap. It also makes sense. It means there must be something big out there. When gold was discovered in the Superstition Mountains, it became a common practice to protect mines with elaborate booby traps to discourage or even kill unwelcome visitors to the area. Protective prospectors were known to let venomous rattlesnakes in mines to bite trespassers, or to line the entrance of a mine with toxic arsenic dust, fatal to anyone who inhaled it. Others used primitive engineering to set tripwires or plant boards with rusty nails to impale would-be thieves. No one knows how many death traps still reside within the superstitions. Present-day prospectors must always be on guard so gold fever doesn't lead to death. I just don't like this. I don't know what else they could have done here. This thing could come down on us, so I don't even know if we want to even attempt to get in there. The Jesuits love this kind of stuff, these traps. 
That's their mark. A lot of people like these kind of traps. I don't necessarily think this has anything to do with the Jesuits, but who knows? Oh, it looks kind of old. Remember, there's even those who believe Jacob Waltz said he set his up that way. I'd say this warrants we definitely investigate the area. Jesuits came to Southwest America from Spain in the 1600s as part of a drive to colonize the continent and convert natives to Christianity. Many believe the Jesuits discovered gold in the superstitions. After mining a fortune of the precious metal, they came up with ingenious and deadly ways to protect their rich claims. We need to document this, get photographs, get the GPS coordinates, grab some samples. See, it looks, be careful though, watch your edges. Oh, it's got a smell in here too. All right, here's a good sample. Got it. Let me see one. The cave isn't deep enough to be a pit mine, but we're gonna get some samples to test it anyways. This could be a lead or a very elaborate decoy. The science will tell us whether it's worth coming back here, but I'm not risking setting off another booby trap until we know for sure. Guys, let's grab up all the gear and head back to camp. One of my good friends is a great geologist. He specializes in rocks, minerals, structural geology. So we're gonna take the samples and the pictures we took from that cave, send them to him, and see if this might be the site of the Lost Dutchman. That's, that's crazy. I've never seen anything like that. Toast. I'm the youngest out of the five of us, but between avoiding booby traps, dodging bullets, oh, hey, Jesus Christ, and getting spied on by helicopters all day. See it? That's uh, an Apache. Yeah, it's military. It's really starting to wear on me. What the hell is this, Magnuson? I'm gonna leave a pile of rocks here. Deal, you sure those rocks weren't there? I'm 100% sure those were not here when we left. Did you guys do that? They weren't here before. Oh, man. This is not good. This is the second time we've seen the black hand on this strip, and this time it was clearly meant for us. This stuff really spooks me. It's a sign telling us to get out of here, like I was telling the guys last night. I heard some stories about American Indians. They got a name called uh, the Black Legion. They give you a sign of a big black hand on something. And supposedly, that's a warning to get the hell out of there wherever you're at. Somebody been in the picking camp, right? Now, this is a warning. We got to be really careful here. What does this mean? I mean, is, is somebody screwing with us? Apache warning us? Is there somebody up on that ridge with a rifle pointed at us? That's my fear. I think Wayne's right. We got to get the hell out of here. I don't feel good about camping here. I'm with you. Don't feel good about being anywhere out here. Gold makes people do crazy things. So it's entirely possible that someone's been tailing us this entire time, trying to get us off our game, hijack our leads, or get inside of our heads. We expect them scared. I know. Well, you see this, pay attention. Probably the same people from last night. Whoever's doing this is pushing the right buttons because it definitely has Woody and even Deal to an extent freaked out. What do you want to do about this, Wayne? What we're going to do, band in camp, OK? OK, this place is no good to us now. I know you guys are tired. We need to get out of here, all right? You want to get out right away? What kind of stuff you want to take? We grab what we can. Let's go. All right. Now, until we have a better understanding of what's happening to us, it's best that we leave the area immediately. We'll rest up, regroup, and then plan our next move.
I'm heading out from Quarter Circle U. You can have a video chat with my geology buddy, Brian. Brian's a good friend and a good contact of mine, and I ended up sending him some photos and some rock samples that we had taken from that cave so he could take a look at them and give me his professional opinion. Hey, man. No, how you doing? Good Do to hear from you. Yeah, doing well, doing well. Interesting looking rocks you have. A chance to look over them, go over them a little bit. So based on the, the samples and the pictures I sent you, is there any evidence that we should be looking in that cave or that the Lost Dutchman's potentially there? The sample you sent me from that cave and from the pictures in that cave, it uh, does not appear to be mineralized at all. I really think you need to move your search elsewhere. All right, thanks so much for your time, man. I, I appreciate it. All right, take care. Bye. Based on the results that Brian gave me, now I can take this back to the team and hopefully put this issue to rest. Maybe the booby trap was protecting something a long time ago, but it's not the Lost Dutchman. With the team back in town and facing the prospect that somebody's been following them through the superstitions, Wayne has decided to seek advice from some trusted advisors. Along with Frank and Eric, Wayne will tap the collective experience of three of Arizona's most veteran Dutch hunters, a trio with more than 150 years combined experience searching for the Dutchman. Hey guys, Wayne. Hey Jack, how you doing? How you doing? Come in. Jack's a noted author um, and historian of the mountains. George, of course, at the museum, has a good overview, a number of resources to pull off of. And with Clay, it's 60 years or more of experience in the mountains. And that's where I'm looking to draw the most from, because he's going, he lived in those mountains enough that he'll be able to tell these guys, you know, that's just not the way it is. We were hoping to show you some pictures, actually, guys. Um, See what you make of it. See if you recognize anything. Um, here's some of the passies around. What we really need to know is if they have any connection at all with the Dutchman or even date back to his time period in the 1870s. The medicine wheel mean yeah. anything? Oh, badass, dude. Look at that. This one looks to me like it's pretty modern construction, if you'll pardon the expression. Something like the walls I built around my house with rocks from the desert. This looks like it was built yesterday. Okay. Because there is no dirt blown in around any of right. these rocks. These rocks are fresh rocks setting there with no dirt blown in around them. So I think it's I think it's strictly modern. We're getting exactly the kind of feedback I hoped for. If George and Clay think the medicine wheel is relatively new, then I guess it's off the table. What about these black handprints? This is not in this carved in the stone. This no, is a no, no, pictograph. Right that handprint was placed at our campsite. It wasn't there before. Somebody painted it there. And we also found it inside of a cave. What you got? I see a black handprint on the wall. There's a few more members of our team that are taking this stuff a lot more seriously as paranormal. And it's starting to affect what we're doing. You know, if we lose one guy, that, that really hurts us. So when people start talking about paranormal things, it kind of leaves me on the outside looking in. Absolutely. Now, the Black Legion, uh, I didn't think much, much of it. Now, that, th that's a theory. Uh, I don't know that's ever been proved. How many black hands have you come on in your camp? The only ones I've seen were not black. They were red. The only hands I've ever seen are at other places, and I must say, they have always been red. I think there's something to do with, with that color that they use for that, because it's a relatively easy one to get. George's insight about the Native Americans, it really makes a lot of sense. The colors and the pigments and paints they would have used at the time would have been found in the earth around them, like red, which is all around this desert. There's no way that the black hand symbols we've seen date back to the 1800s. They're definitely all modern. All of which means we can hopefully put all those Indian legends to bed and tell Woody he can stop worrying about the Black Legion. The thing that concerns me most about all this is we've been really, really discreet about going back up in there. And, you know, so if somebody's obviously trying to mess with us, but uh, I, I don't know how they know we're there. And I can't wrap my head around that one. Well, you leave your tracks, okay? If it's a good hunter, and I started going with my dad when I was five, 
And so I learned the hunter's secrets. People out in the desert a lot, they can read your signs. And whatever you're doing, if they think you're onto something, they may follow you. What is the greatest treasure in the Superstition Mountains? The Lost Dutchman Mine. It attracts people like flies. Therefore, if they see you out there and think you're looking for something, maybe you're in their area. That eventually could lead to something if you're not prepared. I hadn't had this problem until we hit this one particular area. And, and like you mentioned, maybe we stumbled upon somebody else's area and they want to chase us out. I think it's something like that's going on. I mean, does that sound logical to you? It, it sounds very logical. I suspected from the start that somebody's screwing with us. The black hand doesn't look genuine, wrong color. The medicine wheel looks new. Somebody placed it there to scare us. I want to thank all of you for meeting with us here today. You answered a lot of questions for us, and you've given us a lot to think about. On the one hand, I'm disappointed to find a number of the things we came across aren't relics from the past. But on the other hand, finding out they're modern means there's people out there right now trying to actively mislead people in the superstitions. That tells me that there's definitely something out here they're trying to keep hidden. Clay, thank you so George. much. George. Jack, hey, always welcome. a pleasure. Thank you for your George, thanks again. We'll see you later, Captain. OK. So now we have two big questions to answer. Where's the gold, and who's protecting it? After meeting with Jack, George, and Clay, I gathered the boys up, decided it's time to loosen up. So I'm going to take them down to the bar, and while we're there, I'm going to fill them in on what the Dutch hunting experts had to say. Woody's up. Woody's, Woody's yeah. stripes. Show your stuff. We went over and talked with um, Jack San Felice and Clay Wurst, George Johnson. Uh huh. Asked them all about that Black Legion stuff, the black handprints. Yeah. And one of the things, Eric will back me up on this, they said a true Apache would only leave a red handprint, would never leave black handprints. What do you think? I Maybe, mean, but all three of them shot it down, man, without even hesitating. Okay. So, so Woody's theory regarding the Black Legion is shot. It's done, right? Can we rule that they out? They felt it was kind of a fairy tale. Um, Clay, who has 60 years in the mountains, said he didn't have anything from it. These are experts. You trust these guys. They know what they're talking about. Not one of them really had a story involving any of this, seen any type of activity, anything involving far as that storyline. Now, there's seriously someone out there. Well, to be honest, I'm kind of glad that it's not, you know, it has nothing to do with the Black Legion. I'm pretty glad about that. Think about this. We were getting bothered like this when we first started. You know, one way to look at it is, the closer we get to something good, the more likely it is that crap like this is going to happen. I, I think the problem is we're, we're too close to something and somebody's trying to scare us off. It still pisses me off that somebody would go to that level to try to intimidate us. I mean, where do we go from here? Did you get any new leads? Our leads have kind of not panned out, you know? And that's kind of where we're at now is I'm really interested in the area, but we didn't really come up with anything too sharp. Good shot. You got to call this one. We need another lead. We need another resource. We're, we're pounding the same doors. We, we need a new name, something fresh. The medicine wheel and that black hand sure in the hell wasn't left by the Apache Black Legion. But you know what? Somebody wanted us to think it was the Apache Black Legion. So at this point, one thing we got to do is find somebody that's an expert on Indian lore. Any of you guys know a Native American that's familiar with the history of the superstitions and the Dutchman lore that can help us? I know a Pima Indian that might help us. He knows the Superstition Mountains very well. He knows a lot about Indian stuff. I've talked to him a lot. But, That's a good idea. Uh, you know, I, I don't, he's not going to tell us everything he knows, but he could surely help us. Woody, make that call. Make it happen, OK? I will, bud. Oh, oh, yes! 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 I've never been in a thousand years, and I want my 50 bucks. <laughs> After discovering the Indian artifacts don't date back to the time of the Dutchman, 
Wayne, Frank, and Woody are going to meet with Leonard Dan, an expert on Native American tribes in the Superstition Mountains. Native Americans have inhabited what is now Arizona for thousands of years. The name Arizona is actually an old Indian word that means little spring, a reference to a river near the Mexican border. Of the 21 indigenous tribal nations inhabiting the area, two of the largest are Apache and Navajo, which were often rivals as they clashed over food, land, different lifestyles, and gold. Wayne, Wayne? this is Leonard Dan. Nice, nice to meet you, Leonard. The best way to get information from Leonard is to fill him in on our journey and tell him what's been happening. Yeah. So what are you guys up to? Well, we're on the trail of the Lost Dutchman Mine, and obviously that connects to some of the Peralta stories of a number of different mines. So let me kind of show you the particular area we were working in. Now, we were definitely up in this area, the Fish Creek, and we worked all across on this ridge here is where we set camp. Now, what would you do, Leonard, if somebody was following you? Would you hide back and try to see who that was? And wait and see, what, see the who's. Yeah, we, had shows our, up, yeah. we know so much good with us. That's well, for a fact. Our, our last night up there, we, we set up a camp up on a cliff area overlooking the canyon. We just settled in, and uh, someone fired off a couple shots. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Somebody really trying to scare us off, like I said. We don't know who. That's how the Apaches got blamed for a lot of things that the settlers or the prospectors did. So we got the blame for a lot of things like that. Apaches got blamed for a lot of stuff that the white man did. Yes, the, you know, that's H O thing. You know. So you think definitely as far as a lot of the mysterious deaths, the beheadings, a lot of this people did to try to set up the Apaches, to put some blame somewhere else, not only to get themselves away from it, but to I'm make sure, people yeah, fearful because, to yeah, come into the yeah, area? At the time, the, the law was more on the settler side than the Indians. You know, they got blamed for a lot of killings and murders and stuff. So, so they, they got away with it. My understanding of what Leonard was telling us was that the Apache had been blamed for a lot of things over the years that he had nothing whatsoever to do with. Okay. So Leonard, I want to thank you so very much. It was sure. very nice yeah. meeting you. Call me thank anytime you, you know you need us. to talk with me. After talking to Leonard, I'm convinced our problem is not the Apache following us. Our problem is we have somebody following us, we don't know who it is. Ever since we found the Hearthstone based on Frank's Peralta map, there's just been something that's been nagging at me. So I called Beal over to the QCU so I could have a chat with him. See if Wayne left us all the photos. Let's see what we got. So you got the same picture as I have right here. Yeah. Dude, I, between you and me, I don't know that that's an X, man. That looks more like a cross for me. I mean, it depends on what angle you look at it. Yeah. But I think the angle that it's facing, if somebody had made that there, I think the angle you'd normally look at it at, it would be a cross, not an X. I think we were kind of approaching it from a weird angle. Well, I mean, there is also the potential. If you covered this with your finger, that's a perfect X. Now, is there a possibility that whoever carved that, you know, kind of set, set in process some actual weathering that came down the stone? That's a possibility. Say it's not an elongated fracture, say it actually is a cross. Yeah. When that would have been made 150 years ago, what was the symbolism of cross? Yeah. What if that was the Jesuits that put it there? But we know they were in this area, mm -hmm. and they did a lot of mining, and they used symbolism to mark past. They were also known to booby trap their mines, and that's not even a possibility I've heard Wayne talk about. The Jesuits love this kind of stuff, these traps. That's their mark. A lot of people like these kind of traps. I don't necessarily think this has anything to do with the Jesuits. When I started to put the evidence together that we've collected up to this point, the Jesuit connection really jumped out at me. The fact of the matter is, the Jesuits use symbols of a cross to mark their way to mines. They That's keep talking true. about the Peraltas and this and that. But if it is a cross, and that cave was a decoy, and it is man-made, we got to at least look into, the, is it the Jesuits? And if it is, what does that mean? So what do the Jesuits have to do with gold mining and leaving symbols in the mountains? 
So basically, the Jesuits were a Catholic order of monks. They come over here to the New World, which Spain controls, and they go out initially starting to do missionary work. In the process, they find out that the area has a ton of gold in it, so then they eventually get into mining. And they even took slaves to like work the mines and stuff like that. So at some point, the King of Spain finds out that they're finding all this gold and not giving him his fair share, so he essentially issues an order for them to get out of Dodge, orders them all out in the New World. In the process, all this gold they found, a lot of it, they just ended up like burying in place. So they hide it up in the mountains and they create these maps and mark symbols everywhere so that if this stuff gets cleared up someday, they can come back and retrieve it. So this cross could potentially mean that they hid a cache of gold bars or gold ore in this area somewhere. I mean, if they made it, then they put it there for a reason. That takes yeah. a lot of work. I think it warrants uh, further investigation. The fact that we found that right where he said it would be, and it looks like a cross to me, we should, we should dive into it before we just, you know, walk away so that we can make sure it's not just a coincidence. Mm -hmm. If that's a cross, it's worth a little bit more work to find out. All right. Wayne doesn't believe the Jesuits could have been this far north. You know, and I respect that. But Jack San Felice isn't just a Dutch hunting expert. He's a well-known authority on the history of the Jesuits, especially in the Southwest. And that's why I contacted him. I wanted to see if he thought there was any evidence the Jesuits could have been farther north than conventional wisdom suggests. Hey Jack, I want to thank you again for taking the time to meet with me. Hey, that's great. So Jack, um, you know what we're trying to do. And the further we get into it, the more it seems we're getting pulled in a lot of different directions. A lot of the guys, especially Wayne, don't buy into any sort of Jesuit connection. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to pick your brain about a little bit. Once you understand what the role of the Jesuits were in, in old Spain, then you, you uh, have a better understanding that the Jesuits were without a doubt here if the military was here, the Jesuits were here. No doubt, the priest's job was to look for gold and silver. The Jesuits were supposed to keep accurate records of mining. Right. When the Jesuits were going to be expelled, that they knew about it, in time they had informants in the court of the king. They boxed up all of their treasures and the gold that they had to maintain the power of the church. You go in these mountains here and you see these crosses, they're almost kind of like signposts. They left their marks. Yeah, what I'm going to show you is this old Spanish cross up here. And when did you find this? The 90s? In the 90s. Found it in the 90s. Within sight of the cross right now. You see it? Yeah, look at that. It's That's old, awesome. Man. Yeah, it's old Spanish cross. Probably Jesuit. Look at that. Oh, that's amazing, Jack. I think it's probably the only one like this I've seen in the superstitions, in this part of the superstitions, anyhow. So what's that mean? You think it's just marking the entrance to the canyon? I think it's marked what? in the entrance to the canyon, and this is the way to go. You stay to the right, OK? If you look at this section right here, uh -huh. it's pointing down canyon that direction. That means there are other things to see down there and perhaps mines. That's awesome. Can we go check yeah. out the other ones? Let's go. You see it? Where's that? Right there, you Holy see it? Holy moly. To the oh. right under the ledge. It must be a dragon. The ancients around 1400 drew uh, their elks like stick figures and their horses like stick figures. That's not a stick figure. That's crazy. Wayne and Frank have told us that treasure hunters will often disguise their directional markers in already existing ancient petroglyphs. These could be original petroglyphs or it could be something that was added next to some petroglyphs so that they're not as noticeable. So maybe that's what's happening here. This is great, but there's one more thing I want to show you down this way. You'll be amazed. Okay. Watch your step, Eric. It's, it's a little... Uh, rough through here. Pickle Holy crap, man. 
This is the ladder of life, man. The ladder of life. You see? Look at that. You know what the significance of the ladder is? Ancient Indians believed that at the end of their life, they would climb the ladder of life into the afterworld. And the ones on the left, though, they look newer, and they could be an indication that the early miners that went through here put in one, two, three, four, five mines, because those were looked like they were inserted later. And then X means uh, this is the way that you go. Wow, Jack. Coming out here today with Jack, he showed me three great petroglyphs. Two of those three are probably European. Definitely the cross, and I've got an inkling that, that the dragon is too. The latter, I'm not quite sure what to make of that. He says it's Native American, but with the potential mine symbols nearby, I'm even more convinced that there's something to this and we need to look into it deeper. Well, we know one thing, <clears throat> we're gonna need more water next time. Definitely that. Ah, hmm? oh, here he comes. What the hell is it with you? You're always late for hold everything. On. Okay, hold on, you're gonna love me in a second. So I think we could have been looking at this all wrong. We know we've been being followed. This whole time we've thought it had an Indian connection because the black hands and stuff. I think it actually could be a Jesuit connection. I went and I talked to Jack San Felice, because I know he's the Jesuit expert. So he took me out to this place called Willow Canyon, and he showed me a bunch of petroglyphs. Meeting with Jack San Felice was a real turning point for me. After he showed me all the petroglyphs in the canyon, I decided to go ahead and do some research on my own. And what I found was that every single petroglyph he showed me could very well be a Jesuit symbol. I think this whole thing could be a complete game changer. First, there's this one. Some people could think it's a uh, X, looks like a cross, definitely a Jesuit symbol. Check this out. It's a ladder. Wow. Jack said that's called the ladder of life. The Indians did use it, but that's a common symbol across a bunch of religions, including the Jesuits. Okay, guys, then we got this one, dagger. We figured that was some sort of directional thing, maybe pointing to a mine or to a treasure. My research told me this. I was used by the Jesuits in initiation ceremony. This petroglyph. Is that a dragon? That's a dragon. More than likely, that's a Jesuit symbol for like the devil, stuff like that. Okay. It's rumored that during the Jesuit expulsion, they hid clues to secret caches of gold and the superstitions for their eventual return. Some believe these clues are hidden inside ancient Native American petroglyphs. Eric's discovery of the cross and dragon, two European symbols, are signs they could be on a trail to a rich Jesuit stash of gold. Everybody knows the Jesuits were in this area, mining and things like that. So maybe if we start digging into that a little bit more, we'll find better leads rather than pursuing the Indian angle. I think it's something we need to seriously look at. Wayne, I know you're not real big on this, but you have to consider that at least it's a possibility. You know, I get it. I've seen these type of things before. I'm still saying we have a Peralta Gonzalez connection to the area, and now we're starting to kind of pull away and say, oh, there's something completely different here. And that's where I find in Dutch hunting where people go wrong. They start bringing everything in the kitchen sink in, they drop it in there, and you're distracted. You gotta open your mind up. You gotta. Open your mind so when we're in the spot, we look for other things, because who the hell knows what we might find? And Wayne, this doesn't have to be an either or thing. You know, it can still have the Peralta connection, but what if the Peraltas had a Jesuit connection? So it's not like I'm right, you're wrong. I'm just saying maybe we should <laughs> look at this, man. So what you're we, talking we about it. is finding a hidden treasure that's possibly bigger than the Dutchman. If it's hidden Absolutely. Jesuit treasure. Maybe, I mean, they refined it when they got kicked out. Everybody knows they started burying their crap. Maybe we can find the Lost Dutchman and a bunch of Jesuit treasure. There's stories out there that the Jesuits buried treasure all over these mountains. So if this is true, what we could be looking at is way bigger than the Lost Dutchman. Not just one mine, one cache, it could be multiple. 250 people have been killed out there. 
or died. But people don't die and lose their head in an accident. You know, it's not the desert that's taken everybody. So maybe we should look into that. There's a lot of people over the last 150 years that have died looking for the lost Dutchman. And it seems like the closer people get, the more bad stuff starts to happen. And so I think we need to look for a link between all these deaths and the lost Dutchman. Maybe there's a connection there that can help us figure out what's going on here. If this is all centering on one location, this could be really big. Maybe we can find some sort of connection between all the mysterious deaths that happened and a specific location. Well, it worked when you triangulated the hard stones, so maybe you could do something similar with this. Yeah, it's worth a shot. It wouldn't take that long. Let's do it then. Let's get over there and get it done, all right? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Fantastic. Following up on Eric's research, the team will triangulate the deaths and disappearances and the superstitions. By pinpointing these locations on the map, they hope to find a new lead. All right, guys, here's what we're looking at. I have mysterious deaths. We have the uh, Peralta massacre that occurred in here. There was the skeletal remains of the kid here found a number of years ago. You guys got any more throw in here? Well, what about the uh, rotted skull that was found in Fish Creek right before yeah, we went was, to the lake? That was right about here. Wasn't there a guy who got in a head-on collision on his way to a mine? That was John Kocherik along this route okay, here. So and we had Skull Cave. Everyone's familiar with that. 30, 40, 50 people massacred in there. And I do know there was up in here in this draw, eight miners were killed up in the Four Peaks wilderness I area. No, there was the uh, the guy Randy Wright, number quite a few years ago, right along here, and then there was a Robel, and he was actually right up here on the river. That's the Salt River. And that was right up off the Salt River. Yeah. Let's see if we can find a pattern emanating from all this. Well, let me move. Let me move. You sit here. Yeah, I'd be good. Man. We've combined on our map all the deaths that occurred in the Superstition Mountains along with the known locations of Jesuit symbols. So now what I need to do is try to triangulate those and see if there's a pattern, see what it says, and hopefully where it might lead us. Wow, guys, look at that. Wow, guys, look at that. Let me take a look at this. They're all kind of clustered in this general area but it seems like the central node of it all is right around the Black Cross Butte area. It is interesting because unlike the last time you were looking for a pattern, which was a pattern pointing at a specific target, mm -hmm. it seems the specific target's the one place the lines aren't crossing. Right. More interesting than anything else, guys. You got the high ground here overlooking everything. Okay, we got our target. Get everything packed up. I'm gonna fold these maps up, Frank. Yeah. Leave no trace. I really thought Eric might be onto something when he speculated that the X on the heartstone might actually be a cross. When Eric turned that photo on its side, what he really did was turn this whole journey on its head. Black Cross Butte, here we come. You can never be too prepared for what you can encounter in these mountains. I know how to handle a knife and I can use it if I have to. Sometimes you get a hunch and it leads to great results. I can't say for sure that this is where the Dutchman is, but I'm really excited. There's something big in the Black Cross Butte area that's left a lot of bodies on the ground. Something worth dying for. Deal, hand me those maps. I'll pack those up. All right. Hey guys, make sure we got everything together. Don't leave anything behind. We're not coming back. Okay, we got our target and a new lead. Be ready to go, all right? Okay. We are closer to finding a life test mine than we've ever been before. I know we're going into a very bad area. We better be prepared. Eric's suggestion that we triangulate the deaths and the superstitions has led us to our new destination, Black Cross Butte. 
I've been searching for the Lost Dutchman mine for over 40 years, and this is one of the most promising leads I've ever encountered. Break up the glass. Black Cross Butte. You guys see anything out there? Let me know what's up on that ridge there. You know, it looks like there's a band running across the top above the cliff and below the ridge line, like a horizontal band. You want to take a look? Yeah, that looks like old Spanish mule trail. You know, according to the uh, analysis I made on those deaths, the center of that cluster is actually on the back side of that butte. Well, I hate to tell you this, Wayne, but I don't think we're going to get there from here. Well, that's why we're going to approach it from the north side, from off the Salt River. Wayne, what do you think's on the other side? That's something we're going to find out. Next time on Legend of the Superstition Mountains. You guys, look up there. Uh, how the hell would we get up there? Oh! Are you okay? Do, 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 do. That is a huge cave. Take a look at that. Oh man, what the hell is this thing? 